Welcome everyone back to your weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the Eastern RF, the GFS and Eastern RF Ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Metal 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now yesterday we were looking at uh, it being very westerly throughout the rest of February and we're continuing so you're going to be seeing that on the models today. Not too much has changed in the last 24 hours. Now this latest GFS operation we're going to, that we're going to have a look at is actually getting really quite cold in the longer term. But it is a colder outlier so I wouldn't put too much weight into it at this stage. But there is not really any significant trends uh, if anything's much colder uh, or drier. Um, we're still seeing a lot of westerly sort of outlook. But, of course, this GFS operation one could be getting onto something, but I very much doubt it. I very, do, I very much do think that we are going to be having quite a Wesley theme for the rest of, or for the next few weeks at least, um, potentially even beyond that, really. We are going to see some colder air masses, and by the end of this week we're going to be seeing some cold weather for a period of time. But once again, only last couple of days, and winteriness will be pretty much mostly in the north, and potentially in the south uh, for a day or two, mainly frost and maybe some wintry flakes here or there. So nothing too significant. So do remember, if you enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the links in the description. So if we do start out by having a look at the GFS operational run, you can see we do have westerly winds moving in today, and tomorrow, turning things milder. Um, before we actually do go much colder towards the end of the week, as I said, around Thursday, Friday time, we start to see much colder air mass push through, and you can see the minus five lines spread through. And you see high pressure does topple uh, as it tries to reach towards Iceland, but the westerlies do cut it off. So we get a temporary north northwesterly wind before it gets cut off, and things turn um, drier for a period of time, but also really quite frosty potentially through Friday uh, into Saturday as well. Before westerly winds do move back in, and we go mild once again, colder sectors sort of. Um, uh, in between that as well, but as I said, this operation run does go really quite cold in the long term, around 300 hours. We do get a bit of high pressure building towards Iceland or just the south of Iceland. We do pull in a bit of a colder northerly wind, which would turn things potentially um, a little bit more wintry there with more frosts and maybe even some snowfall, something that has eluded many of us so far this winter. But it is very much an outlier, so I wouldn't look too much into it at all um, at this stage. I very much would um, favour milder outlook. And right towards the end of the run, it does start to go more westerly as those um, low pressure systems do topple that high pressure system. We do run it back briefly, have a look at the pressure charts. You can see we do get that brief ridge of high pressure towards Iceland. Bit of a northerly wind, but you see those purples and blues do topple that very, very quickly. So not looking like anything too significant there. But it does go colder for some of the GFS. But as we'll see with the ensembles at the end of the video, it very much is an outlier. Now if we do have a look at what is going on with the GM run. Now you can see westerly winds, and then we do see that cold air mass for the end of the week. For once again, just finish off with westerly winds all the way to day 10. Quite a strong temperature gradient across the Atlantic. 10, a 10 degree ice firm um, down towards France and the minus 10 degree ice firm just to the north and west of Scotland towards Iceland. So, yeah, big strong temperature, con uh, temperature gradient and that means we're going to be seeing big low pressure systems spin up, staying very unsettled, producing a lot of rain and very strong winds with that flat westerly flow. No signs on the GM here of anything really remotely cold uh, except some transient cold air masses like something we're going to be seeing the end of this week so yeah gm not going on uh, anywhere near on board with anything colder like the gfs is now if we do have a look at the uh east of on meteor seal we'll once again see mainly a westerly flow and you can see westerly flow we see a bit of a colder invert incursion later this week before westerly winds return and yeah just really a, a flat westerly wind nothing um nothing different than, than what we've all been seeing over the last couple of days in terms of the 10-day outlook and you can see those purples towards greenland and the reds down towards um spain and portugal and that uh, gradient uh pressure gradient and temperature gradient is going to be fueling the jet stream and we're just going to be seeing a lot of low pressure um westerly winds very strong winds uh, very strong westerly winds of course and we'll be seeing quite some heavy quite some heavy rain as well in the north potentially even some main storms but at this stage, we're not seeing anything really firm up, um, at least for the next five days. So I don't think we'll be seeing any named storms. Um, but we could be seeing some stormy weather return as well with this powerful jet stream. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see how we do have pretty good consistency for around average to slightly above average temperatures in the long term. For now, it is around average, but it's returning to well above average over the next sort of 12 hours as much milder air moves in off the Atlantic. Before we see a big dip for the end of this week couple of days around minus 5 to minus 10 degrees at end of THPA, really quite cold. But 
only lasts, as I said, a couple days before we turn things milder and stay around average or slightly above average for the foreseeable future, really. Precipitation signal does pick up in the south as well, meaning low pressure systems are going to be sinking southwards as well. You can see the GFS operational one there, that thicker green line going really mild, milder outlier, then goes very much a colder outlier. So a bit of a bizarre run from the GFS there. Uh, and again, we'll have to see exactly um, how that does play out. It could just be an anomalous run, um, getting, you know, showing the extremes. But the majority of runs are around or slightly above average with precipitation picking up. Uh, and that precipitation will be even higher further northwards. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, go up to the midnight run again. Very, very similar. Milder over the next couple of days before we turn much colder towards the uh, end of this working week into the early weekend. And then temperatures will turn to around or slightly above average all the way until around the 21st of February. Quite a lot of precipitation as well from these ensembles. Now, of course, there are 50 ensemble members on here. So there's going to be a lot, a lot of precipitation spikes. Um, and they are going to be quite spread out um, in terms of, like, every day is going to have some precipitation spikes. Simply because it is too far in the future to sort of nail on where the rain is going to be. So there will be rain around, probably not as frequent as this chart is showing, but it is going to be turning much more unsettled than it is now, uh, even further southwards where high pressure is tr still trying to hold on, but it will lose its grasp over the next few days and the next week or so. So yeah, not looking good if you're wanting any majorly cold weather. There is potential, uh, as ever, this time of year. There's always a chance, but not not looking like likely, in, at least in the next week or two, perhaps end of February, start of March. But we definitely think we need to see either dis a disconnect of the troposphere, troposphere and the stratosphere, um, so those westerly winds don't couple together, or we're going to have to be seeing a significant decrease in the stratospheric winds that doesn't look likely at the moment. The longer term forecast doesn't have them decreasing in strength until maybe March time. So it's not looking great. Um, this winter, we had so much hope for it. We had so many good climate drivers going for us. We had a very blocked December and even first half of January, but nothing has really delivered. So it is pretty unfortunate. Um, and we were so close to so much colder weather at many periods, but it's never really quite came off, unfortunately. But we also, we've also still got maybe like six weeks of potential colder weather to come. And we'll have to see exactly um, how that does play out. Of course, there is still the potential out there. Now, if we do finish up, have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at the next five days, you'll see there is plenty of precipitation and plenty of wintry precipitation as well, especially towards the end of this week. Now, you see precipitation moving in today, a bit of wintriness over the hills, but mainly rain as milder air moves in. Mostly cloud and a bit of rain for many, but nothing too crazy. Beyond that, wintriness in the north as cold air sinks southwards, and you see that moves through all areas. We see rain potentially mixing with a bit of snow there over higher ground in the south through Thursday, and then just widespread wintry showers, especially further northwards, and even further southwards at times. You see a few of these showers drifting inland. Could see a light covering there overnight here or there, and we see plenty of wintry showers around. A lot of precipitation falling out of the sky will be of a wintry nature, but there won't be that much as high pressure is toppling, so we're always um, getting higher pressure building, and we're not under a big area of low pressure, so it does mean it'll be difficult to get that convection really popping off but if it did get gets off uh, in a few places, we could be seeing some wintriness. And beyond that, generally, things will start to turn more westerly, as you can see weather fronts pushing in from the west. Now, if we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see pretty chilly early this morning, around freezing further northwards. But as the day progressed um, today, we're seeing milder temperatures come in at 10, 11 degrees in the far west, 7 or 8 in the east, but as the, as, as the milder air pushes in. Beyond that, through Monday into early hours of Tuesday, cold in the north, but still 7 to 10 degrees in the south. On Tuesday afternoon, 12 or 13 degrees in the south, around freezing in the north, it's got big temperature contrast. And by Tuesday evening into Wednesday, freezing in the north, and once again, 7 or 8 degrees in the south overnight. And Wednesday afternoon, cold air is sinking southwards, much colder across Scotland, but still 10 degrees in the far southeast. But by Thursday early hours, many areas cooling down, and by Thursday afternoon, 4 or 5 degrees in the afternoon in the south, and around freezing in the north. Friday is going to be very cold morning as well, widespread frost for many areas. Friday afternoon, once again, wide, widely 4 to 7 degrees, and around freezing in the north. And once again, Saturday night will be, again, another widespread frost, especially further southwards uh, and eastwards, where we do uh, still have the colder air, and we're still under higher pressure. So there is some winteriness coming, but it's not massive, and there's no big snow events looking likely in, over the next few weeks. I know a lot of people will be disappointed with this, but that's just how it's played out this winter, unfortunately. So anyway... 
Uh, a lot of westy winds coming up, so a lot of rain, uh, not a lot of dry conditions uh, are looking particularly likely. But we, of course, we will have some dry days. We'll have some frostier days as well. So we're not seeing an absolute uh, westerly fest. There is going to be little breaks in between, but nothing too crazy. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.